Welcome everyone to the Fleet Forum Wednesday webinar. I see that um, many people already come in. It's good to see you all on this webinar on sustainability, uh, and especially looking at how targets and a baseline can support you in your sustainability efforts, in your objectives related to reduction of emissions. I hope that you can all hear me. Uh, and see me uh, just to get an idea if that is the case. It would be great yeah, if you can all, uh, yeah, I see thumbs up, very good. So uh, it would be great if you can, uh, in the chat, um, let us know who you are, where you're from, um, what organization you work for, and maybe also your role. Yeah, and then we can, let's say, have a, a good idea on who's in this uh, webinar uh, today. So for many organizations uh, in the sector, um, reduction of emissions and especially reduction of carbon emissions becomes more and more important, more and more prominent. Most organizations already have objectives related to reduction of emissions. And that is what we would like to talk about today. So how can you think about uh, targets related to sustainability? How can you think about a baseline and how can it support you in your efforts to reduce emissions? What I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen uh, to start today's webinar. There is an, uh, a question and answer button as well uh, that you will see. Please use that during the webinar or at the end of the webinar, if you say.
Um, so hopefully you can hear me again. Because indeed, um, I was frozen. Um, I could see myself frozen as well. Um, yeah, so good. Great. Um, my apologies um, for the technical hiccup. Um, and I don't know where I exactly left off, but let me start sharing my screen again. And then we go back to the presentation. And I will go one step back. So sustainability targets. And so the question is, do you, um, uh, let's say, what is the reason for setting sustainability targets, or objectives, or goals, how you, would, uh, how you would call it? So question to you is, did you already set uh, targets for, uh, for this year, uh, for uh, 2024, specifically related to sustainability? So you use that and say, well, no, I did or I did not uh, use any sustainability targets. Uh, just let me know in the, uh, uh, in the chat. Uh, and then we take it. Okay, Moses, great. I see you did. Uh, and let's see how other people uh, uh, already, whether they did or did not. See also, Roman, yes, you did. It's great to see. Uh, um, well, please stay on because it's also for people who already did set targets. Uh, we can uh, also uh, discuss a bit how we look at it. So, so, so you did your target. But again, why would you set targets? Um, well, actually, as far as we are concerned, there are two main reasons why you should work with targets. And today we will specific, specific, specifically focus on sustainability targets. So targets can make your life easier. So how can you make your life easier? Because it's the perfect communication tool. So if you have clear targets, and we come back later in how you set your targets, it is a great way to communicate within your organization to your team to your stakeholders, to your partners, is this is what we would like to achieve this year. That means that if you can communicate it very clearly what you want to achieve this year, it also means that it's a great way to engage people. Uh, you can engage your own team. You can use your team to set your targets, to see what can be done to reach your targets. But it's also a great way to, uh, let's say, engage your manager in um, what she or he can do to support you to realize your targets. It's a great way to engage other colleagues, colleagues from administration, from uh, logistics, from program people. Uh, so everyone else in your organization or even outside of your organization, your suppliers, for example. So how can they engage? How can you engage them in realizing your targets? And it's the perfect focus tool extremely important that you choose your battles, so to speak. So what is it? What are the few topics that you want to realize this year uh, where you can focus on? So targets make, in that sense, your life easier. You know exactly what you want to do. You can communicate it very clearly. You can, um, let's say, engage people. And it's a great way, let's say, to focus on it. But it's also, you know, when you reach your targets, it will give you a lot of satisfaction because, you know, when you set your targets and you reach them at the end of the year, it will make you happy and very satisfied. It also makes your team stronger because you work together with everyone in your team to realize the objective. So it means that you, you have a stronger engagement with each other because you collaborate, you have a clear common goal. Uh, you all work towards that goal. So it makes, makes the team that you work in stronger than before. It gives you recognition within your organization. Uh, also, of course, within your team, but also within your organization. With you and your team, you realize specific objectives that are important for the organization. So you get the recognition that belongs to that. And also very important, it reinforces confidence and self-esteem. If you manage to realize let's say, important targets for the organization, you feel proud, you feel strong, you feel self-confident, and you know that you can even achieve more. So there's a very good reason to work with targets. 
And today, like I said, we will talk about targets specifically for sustainability. And we will focus on reduction of carbon emissions. As you all know, um, is that the main driver for carbon emissions is burning of fuel. And that's what you do if you operate vehicles, whether it's your own vehicles or whether it's rented vehicles. The moment you use vehicles, and you drive, you burn fuel in most cases, at least, because most vehicles are still vehicles with an engine. So if you look at your targets, then you should look at how can you reduce fuel usage. That means reduce less fuel because you don't drive, but it also means is reduce fuel while driving. So reduction of fuel consumption. And if you start looking at, so what is it that you could achieve this year? What is the target that you should have? Then the most important assumption or rule or tip uh, or um, whatever you would like to call it is to realize that the cleanest kilometer is the kilometer not driven. And that's extremely important to realize because many people, many organizations tend to look at their current fleet, their current operation, their current transport and see how they can improve that. Where in fact, there's two steps before you start improving your current transport modes. And the first one is avoid the cleanest kilometer is the kilometer not driven so every kilometer you do not drive or don't, do not need to drive mean that you don't burn fuel um, so there's no carbon emissions involved with that but it also of course reduces costs and reduces road risk so avoid is always the first thing that you need to look at so you sit together uh, with uh, people in your organization to see what is the transport demand and can we reduce that amount in order to avoid driving kilometers. The second step is, okay, if is there really a need for transport? Look at, are there other ways, environmentally friendly modes, let's say, to transport or to move people from one place to the other or goods from one place to the other? Public transport, for example, can you use that or can you use um, e-bikes, can you walk, uh, but also a very important one, can you share trips, vehicle sharing is a great way uh, to reduce your kilometers driven because you share uh, uh, vehicles instead of two vehicles, you only drive with one vehicle or maybe even instead of three vehicles, you only drive with one. So that's the shift mode. First, again, try to not drive to avoid, let's say, the demand for transport, if it's still needed, see if you can find more cleaner uh, modes, environmentally friendly modes. And if that's all, let's say, um, you have all reviewed that was possible, then you go to what is the current transport modes that you use and are there other ways to look at it? Uh, for example, you work on ego driving, huh? so your fuel consumption um, uh, it will improve. You look at uh, smaller vehicles, you look at hybrid vehicles, you look at electric vehicles. So the avoid, shift and improve, let's say approach is very important to see how you can, uh, let's say, set your objectives. Also how you can reach your objectives. But first, it's important to know what the current situation is, what your current emissions are. So set your baseline. Uh, it's very important to know where you are because if you know it, you know where you can, uh, let's say, improve. You can know, you, you can know, you know, let's say, where you can reduce burning of fuel and you know whether you are successful or not. So the baseline is the start of everything. Um, and some organizations have, an, let's say, their own organizational method to set a baseline. And in this case, we look at baseline setting for uh, carbon emissions. If your organization does not have a tool or a method, um, you can use the fleet form Clean Fleet Tool. And the Clean Fleet Toolkit, you see a picture here. 
it's very clear. You can reach it, let's say, from our from our website. Uh, and I would say the only thing that you need to do is key in the data of your current fleet. What type of vehicles do you drive at the moment? And the tool will show you what are the emissions, carbon emissions, but also particulate matters. But let's focus on carbon emissions. So the tool will show you what your current carbon emissions are. So if you know that, you have the basis. That's the baseline. Once you know your baseline, you can start looking at, okay, so this is my baseline. This is, let's say, the, 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 the emissions I have with my current transport. And then you're going to look at where can you change the way you operate. So first you start with how, can you how, how much fuel can you reduce by avoiding, avoiding transport needs, transport demands. So you sit together with the people who use your transport in the organization. So that's people, um, program people, uh, going to camps, going to development programs, going to the ministry, going to other organizations. So there's many people in the organizations who use vehicles, whether you own vehicles, whether rented vehicles. So you sit together and see what are the transport demands. And maybe you say, well, now we go, we have staff in your organization who go to a refugee camp, for example, five days a week. Well, what you can discuss is whether it's also possible to do that four days a week without compromising on the impact of the work that they do. Or you say, well, you know, we go to, I have uh, three different meetings with different departments in the ministry or with other organizations. Can I sort of combine that and do two meetings in one day instead of two days in a row? So that's the discussion you can have internally. How can you reduce the demands for transport? Because then you can reduce the number of kilometers driven. So you estimate, you say, okay, let's say that we can reduce the number of trips by 4%. And then you can estimate how much fuel you can save by doing so. So that's the first step. So that's an estimation of the reduction of fuel by avoiding driving and by reducing the transport demand. So then you still have left all the trips that need to be done, all the transport needs that are still there. So how can you shift? For example, you can say, okay, is there a way that People can use public transport. Is there a way uh, for trips in city and especially in, in larger cities where it's the congestion is very severe? Is there a way that you can, uh, let's say, shift to, for example, uh, e-bikes or uh, normal bikes or even walking? Uh, and, and a very important one is also, can you share trips? Well, the most obvious uh, ones are, for example, trips to the airport, from the capital to the airport, or from the capital where your offices are uh, to refugee camps. You know that many organizations will do the same trips at the same time. So you can look at whether you can work together internally with different departments, but also with other organizations to see how you can, let's say, have more people in one vehicle if you all go in this, on the same trip. Uh, again, for example, the most obvious ones, um, airport trips, you know, in that plane that arrives, there's many people from many organizations and many vehicles going there to pick up people. So see if you can combine these trips. And if there's still, let's say, um, vehicles needed to drive, it's like, so, okay, how can you improve, for example, by coaching your drivers on eco-driving. So that means that they use less fuel while driving their vehicle. But it's also by looking at cleaner vehicles. Yeah. Uh, for example, you look at smaller vehicles. So is it really needed that you have a heavy duty 4x4 vehicle when you mainly drive in a city? You can also choose a smaller city vehicle. Or you look at hybrid or electric vehicles where you can really substantially reduce um, your emissions. And also what you see now, there are cleaner vehicles available. And the, the fuel efficiency of, you, of vehicles 
is going up. There are newer, even newer heavy duty 4x4 vehicles available uh, with a higher emission standard and therefore a reduction of your fuel consumption. So once you've know once you know once you've estimated how much fuel can i reduce by not driving avoiding how much fuel can i reduce by using public transport or e-bikes how much fuel can i use by sharing trips internally or with other organization and how much fuel can i save by um, using cleaner vehicles because i have to replace some of my vehicles this year uh, or by uh, ego driving. So if you have all that information available, then you have an estimation of what your target could be. And once you know that, it is important that you uh, look at the way that you set your targets. SMART, something that many of you in the meantime know what that means, how that works that your targets should be smart. That means they should be specific. Uh, they should be has so a, a number or a percentage. They should be measurable. Are you able to collect the data in a way that you can monitor whether your objective, um, uh, whether you reach your objective? It should be actionable. You should be in charge of the actions that you need to realize the objective. Otherwise, you cannot be accountable for it. It should be realistic. Uh, don't set a target of which you know, I will never reach that. Make it realistic. It's for yourself, but also for the people who work with you, much uh, less frustrating if they know that this target is realistic. And it should be time bound. So for example, uh, instead of saying, I want to start with Vehicle sharing in 2024, a smart target could be that you say, I want to reduce the usage of fuel by 4% by um, uh, sharing 400 trips in 2024 before the end uh, of the year. That is a smart target. The specific, it's 4% reduction by let's say 400 trips shared, you can measure it, you can measure the percentage, you can measure the number of trips. It's actionable because you are, you can be responsible, accountable, you can set the action to work together with other organizations uh, or with different departments in your own organization to see how you can um, align specific trip requests in order to have it, let's say there are several people in one vehicle. Realistic, that's based on the review that you did. You say, okay, I think it is possible looking at all the trips that we make, how many trips we do, we go about six times a day to the airport. If we, let's say, do about one to one and a half trip per day on average to be shared with another organization. Okay, I think it's realistic. And I want to realize that before the end of the year. So be very smart. We're setting smart targets because it makes it easier to see whether you uh, reach your objectives along the way during the year and to see if you need to intervene or set corrective actions. So once you have your actions, your, your objectives set in a smart way, uh, you translate that into an action plan with a clear objective. The objective is what you just said, for example, in before the end of the year, I want to reduce my fuel usage by 4% by sharing 400 trips with uh, other organizations. That's the objective. The activity is um, need to align with other organizations and need to start sharing trips. And you describe what needs to be done. So you need to invite other organizations or other organizations to discuss whether you can, let's say, bring together your trip requests every week to see where you can share trips. Who will do it? It's you and other responsible people from other organizations. The resources that you need um, is depending, in this case, whether you need, whether you say, well, we might want to use a tool or we make a share folder where we, uh, let's say, all store file our transport requests and the time frame. 
I want to have an agreement with other organizations before the 1st of March. Um, and I want to start sharing trips before the 1st of April. That's an example of an action plan that you can set. Important to focus. A big risk is that you say you're so ambitious and you're so enthusiastic. You say, okay, let's have uh, 10 different, um, 10 different uh, objectives. The, there's a fair chance that you will not realize 10 different objectives. So focus on a very limited number of ambitious targets that you want to realize. Yeah, for example, for this year, uh, I want to reduce my fuel usage by 3% by, uh, let's say, re reducing the number of trips by 5% before the end of the year. That's one. Secondly, I want to focus on vehicle sharing uh, with an objective we just set. And thirdly, I <clears throat> will replace, <clears throat> apologies, I will replace five of my vehicles this year, which are up for replacement by cleaner vehicles. Stick to that. And you say, well, but there's a lot of other things you can do. Yes, there's a lot of other things you can do. But if you focus, there's a higher chance that you will realize your objectives. Okay. And the good news is, because we very much focus now on reduction of emissions by reduction of burning fuel. And indeed, if you drive less kilometers, that means that you use less fuel and you will have a reduction of carbon emissions. But at the same time, if you drive less kilometers, that means less fuel and therefore also a reduction of costs. And if you drive less kilometers, it also means that there are less vehicles on the road and therefore you have less road safety risks. So by focusing on reduction of carbon emissions, at the same time, you also look at reduction of costs and you also look at reduction of road crashes. It goes hand in hand. And so it's not like if you focus now on your carbon emissions, because it's extremely important for your organization, that all of a sudden you don't focus on cost and road safety anymore. It goes hand in hand. Um, so you can work on all three of them. So get inside your missions. It's important to set your baseline. If you don't have a baseline, you cannot know what you can realize uh, and you have, so you can also not monitor whether you are successful. Really look at the impact of the initiatives and use this avoid, shift, improve approach. Collect together with your team, together with other colleagues from programs, for example. Collect all kinds of initiatives that you can do with this avoid, shift, improve, and then take the ones of which you know, okay, those are most impactful. If you have an initiative of which you think, well, I can reduce half percent of my fuel, but I need to do a lot of activities that might not be the most impactful and not the one you should focus on. Ensure that you set smart targets that makes, um, that makes it very clear. It's easier to communicate that as well. You know, it, it, it makes your life easier because everyone knows what to do. Engage your team, you know, work together with your team to come up with all kinds of ideas which you need to, can do and also other stakeholders in your organization. And do not forget, the cleanest kilometer is the kilometer not driven. And avoid driving and shift to other transport modes is always the initiatives that have the biggest impact, bigger than improving your current fleet. Okay. So we, I will leave it here. Um, we ran through our half hour, uh, but yeah, we had some technical hiccup so if, if you allow me, I would still want to open the floor uh, to see if there are specific questions. And I will stop sharing my screen and to see if there is, let's say, one or two questions uh, that we can still cover. I see here, Carlos, in global fleet management practices, sometimes we leave country operations to decide which types of vehicles they need if someone from headquarters want to check if vehicles are properly selected is there any sort of guideline or tool that the person from headquarters could use to conduct the assessment um yeah, the question is carlos whether you want to have a tool to check it um you can always 
uh, use a tool or a guideline. But I think most important is that um, people in countries, so country operations and headquarters are completely aligned in what you want to achieve as an organization. And I think that's most important. And then based on that, you can set some guidelines. For example, you can say, we agree that we want to have, we want to reduce our emissions as much as possible. That means that for every selection of vehicle type, we always start with the cleanest vehicle possible. Um, if that's, let's say that makes it easier. That's not a clear guideline. I do realize that, but at least it makes it easier to have the discussion together uh, where a country might say, well, I take a, um, let's say a vehicle, a, a type of vehicle that we always used uh, and uh, it's a high fuel consumption. If you agreed up front that reduction of emissions, but you, you can have the discussion together and say, okay, but what is the exact purpose of the vehicle? You know, where do you use the vehicle? Maybe you can use a smaller vehicle uh, or a maybe even electric vehicle. So that makes it easier because then someone at field level might not feel attacked by headquarters, but feel supported by headquarters because you discuss together and you use each other's expertise. This may be a long answer and not exactly maybe what you're looking for, but I think that is extremely important uh, when you think about how headquarters can work together with field operations. Align, be very much clear on the alignment of your objectives. Uh, Moses, I want to increase my occupancy rate. Can you please share the formula that would help me? Uh, a formula, um, I would say a, a great way to increase your occupancy rate is by sharing vehicles. Work together with other organizations. Like I said, the, 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 the easiest examples are airport trips and trips to camps, which happen uh, both happen, let's say, in, in your situation. So that means if you start basic, just start somewhere. Start with working with other organizations to see, uh, let us share the trip request for all the airport trips. And the moment you start sharing the trips, you see, oh, yeah, next week, Monday, there's a flight coming from Rome, uh, from Paris, uh, from um, uh, Bonn, Berlin, wherever. Um, and we see that we both have, or all three have, let's say, a request to pick up someone from the airport. That means three vehicles with one person. Let's, let's say, work together and send one vehicle to pick up three people. So a formula is, uh, let's say, not an easy, let's say there's, there's not a formula which you, which you can use to say, okay, this is the way that they can do it. It's really working in practice to see how you can share trips in order to have more people in one vehicle. Um, the last one. Organization regulations linked to security and insurance force use of own vehicles for staff members only. Any good experience that can use shared transport among organizations. I know that this is sometimes security and insurance is sometimes a reason for an organization to say, well, we cannot share vehicles. Um, we have quite some a good experience in the meantime in Lebanon uh, with working with different organizations in uh, sharing uh, trips. And we also looked at what does it mean for security and, uh, and insurance. Um, so if you go to our website, uh, you can find information on vehicle sharing. There's a vehicle sharing guideline as well that will cover uh, some of your uh, challenges and worries here. If you don't feel like if you can find the answer, then please reach out to me uh, personally, uh, and I will see how we can further support you. Okay. All right. Um, we will end our webinar here. Uh, next week, there will be, a, no, not next week, on the 12th of February, there will be a webinar again with the topic on fleet profiling. So let's say an overview of vehicles and transport types 
uh, to support you in making the right selection, let's say, for vehicles. Thank you all um, for joining today, um, for listening in, uh, and have a great rest of today. Okay. Bye-bye.